Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and lovers of drones all over the world, welcome to Thursday Night Live. Yeah, kick it. Play that fake bass. Play it, Linda. Come on. Yeah. Welcome to the show, everyone. Oh my God, I'm so excited. Almost Christmas time. And uh, of course, I have to do the Christmas razzmatazz. There you go. Ah. We are droning in a winter wonderland. Hello, Linda. Welcome to the hey. program, my friend. How you doing there, Kenny? Pretty good. Coming up today on the show, um, we've got Gary, the everyday dad. He's uh, a gizmo guy, and he's got a really great channel. I hope you go ahead and subscribe to him. There's a link in the description. Your chance to win a Predator FPV drone. This thing right here. Let me go ahead. And uh, do the full screen on this because you've got to just drink in all mm. of this fantastic droniness right here. I flew this before, and it's uh, it's a little underpowered, but hey, it's a drone, and it's got a little camera on it, and it could uh, could be in your stocking. Also, um, we'll talk about the new DJI Phantom 4 RTK here in a little bit in the news. Uh, Kelly from Ready Set Drone will join us because Linda, you've got a leave in a little bit is that right i got to go meet a client i have to make real dollars real real dollar bills y'all okay so uh he'll join us here in about 45 minutes um i've got a video of an emergency landing from one of our viewers who was piloting a private plane when one of the engines went out ouch and we will tease dana williams later in the show by peeling stuff off of new gizmos but first as always it's our ever-present sponsor the pigeon and the jerky you'll enjoy pigeon jerky pigeon jerky the cadillac of processed meats you'll enjoy pigeon jerky pigeon jerky and you'll give your family a treat it's balanced nutrition to help them grow yeah and it's full of fiber to make them go you'll enjoy pigeon jerky pigeon jerky the cadillac of processed meats yeah all right very good what was the name of your uh your your pigeon again baldy old baldy there stop the music it's time for news from the drone newsroom, it's all the drone news you ever need to know. It's Linda. Take it away. Tell us all about it, Linda. Boom. Saw this fancy picture online of a new DJI drone. It's called the DJI RTK drone. Yes. Which, which, by the way, do you know what that stands for? Uh, it stands it for... It stands for real-time kinematic. That's what it stands for, yes. Yeah. And Basically, uh, what it's able to do, uh, or what they report that it's able to do is keep its position much better than the standard drone. So for example, the standard drone will drift a couple of feet one way or the other, possibly. Right, right. This drone is able to hold its position to about two inches is what they say. Yeah, but look at it. It's got a goiter on it. It's got a growth. It just has a little bump. Don't hate. I feel, I feel like I need to take it in and, and have that removed. It, yeah. it, uh, it needs some compound W on your drone. It'll, it'll keep it in place better. Okay, good. Yeah, I mean, I wonder how much that'll be. No word on that, huh? It's going to be more. No, it really didn't say anything. And, and some of the information that was listed, even that we have to take with a grain of salt. It's just basically a picture that popped up. So, hmm. All right, moving on. Yes. We got some first responders that are learning to fly drones so yeah. that they can That's you right. Know, better. That's right. You know, uh, hold, drones. Hold that beautiful footage. Yeah, oh yeah, here we go. I'm going to roll this. This is from a, a news report, and uh, enjoy this. Drones are one of the hottest toys of the Christmas season. Yeah, but they've also become a useful f tool for first responders to save lives. You might remember this video from last month when Randolph County used a drone to find a missing <laughs> woman in a field. And now more departments are learning how to fly to be ready to keep you. I hate local news. <laughs> Start the engines up. All right, here we go. Gibsonville police officer Josh Taylor is learning how to fly a drone. Left, right, up, down. He's part of a group of first responders from across the region, learning how they can use the drone technology in their jobs to keep people safer. This machine could, in fact, save lives and keep us safe out in the field as well. That's, I mean, 
takes you know kind of some of the risk factor out of it oh and i'll tell but before they can take flight they had to learn the ground rules a week in the classroom not only learning the basics and there are situations where it's not always going to be a, a good solution but also earning their faa license there's a lot of responsibility with flying these they need to know you know where it is and what direction it's flying in uh, at all times. Outside, the class learned how drones can help them in hostage situations, finding missing people, or, like this training scenario, dealing with a bomb threat. Instructors placed a suspicious package behind a building so the class could practice maneuvering the drone close enough to get a good look. There it is. Well, this is just another tool in their toolbox to be able to save time, save money, save lives. I like it. I like it. I like uh, good drone news, don't you? Yeah, of course I do. But uh, local news, yeah, it's kind of cringeworthy. <laughs> and, and this just in, yeah, I just received a text from my client that oh, yeah. just canceled my meeting. So I'm here all night if you have me. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, we'll still bring <laughs> Kelly in. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. I mean, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, me too. I need those dollars. Oh, all right. I'm sorry. All right. Moving on. Yes. Next news story. The mm. FAA has released a list of seven facilities where their Department of Energy facilities, DOA facilities, mm -hmm. where you can't fly more than or closer than 400 feet from these facilities laterally. Right. Here's Which the list. Kind of makes sense, if though. If you live near one of these places, don't go running over there and flying it. That's the takeaway message. Right. Even if it looks really, really cool, don't do it. Because I think some of the places are authorized to shoot you down. <laughs> well, <laughs> they certainly, you should certainly not fly near them, I would think. No, use common sense. Yeah, exactly. Mm. All right, moving on. There mm. were some drug smugglers in the UK doing some naughty, naughty things with their drones, smuggling mm. drugs at the prison. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. And uh, they, they were able to put down about 49 flights. Hold on, I'll finish this thought. 49 flights before they got caught, so. Wow, uh, that's awesome, Jeff great Baker. story. But Jeff Baker, man, you, you know that uh, this, this, uh, this show is free, right? It seems like every week Jeff Baker is paying to see us and i'm fine with that pun thursday show me a piano falling down the mine shaft and i'll show you a flat miner merry christmas mm. wow hey a couple of these in your stocking oh, 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 oh. that's great thank you so much yes uh, super chat is open right now and on and uh, that does get our attention we'll talk uh, to the chat a little bit later on if you're new to the stream we're not ignoring you uh, but uh, we'll we'll have a Q and A here in a little bit. So yeah. is there is there another story, Linda, in the news? There is. Well, let me finish up the drug story by saying that between the eight people that were involved, they ended up getting 28 years worth of jail time. So, wow! Can you imagine the cool drones that'll be out uh, by the time they get out of prison? <laughs> I mean, I we'll, know they're probably planning now. Yeah, we'll be up to the Phantom Eleven by the time they're out. That's right. Well, yeah. let's finish it on a high note. Okay. okay. Some of you may remember, if you watched the show before, that I told you about this thing called the snot bot. I'm sorry, the what bot? The snot bot. <laughs> that's right. That's the one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So these, these, uh, this group of scientists have this uh, drone out there that basically has like a Petri dish strapped to it. And it's able to collect, uh, you know, specimens from the blowhole of these whales when they fly over them. It's really cool. Yeah. Roll that footage. Yeah. Okay. Go wide. Okay. 29. This is them. Um, actually collecting the the snot with the bot i guess she's the spotter well it takes a lot of coordination so yeah absolutely and the, and they have a little um sponge thing on the front i would think that the prop wash would blow the snot away but uh that's pretty good it's very fascinating and i do like the use of drones for practical purposes like this and to help animals and us or just the use of snot. Or the or the use of snot. I, you know, I'm a big fan of snot. Yeah, it's not funny, Ken. <laughs> it's not. No, it's it's definitely snot funny. So anyway, all right. Um, I need to um, let everybody know that if you're if you're new to the channel, we do this every every week, and I want everybody to click on the bell. Please click on the on the subscribe bell. Oh, I have, I have, uh, I have props. Hold on here. I'll demonstrate how to do it. You go, you subscribe, then you take your mouse and you, you, you click on the veil. 
Excellent. See, see, just that like is, that. That is some high tech CGI. Yeah, well, sir. you know, my effects department, they get the big bucks. <laughs> I know they do. I know they do. Yeah. Um, so before we get into, uh, and I have so much stuff, do you want to tell a few jokes? Do I? All right. Here's Linda with some jokes. Knock, knock. Who's there? Amish. Huh. <sighs> Amish who? You're not a shoe. <laughs> Amish. Yes. I'm a shoe. I get it. I like that one. That's great. That's awesome. <laughs> you got more? Uh, why was the turkey asked to join the band? Why was the turkey asked to join the band? Mm-hmm. Why? Because... Because he's got drumsticks. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. You're welcome for that little gem. Yeah. Not a huge fan of that one. You got one more? Yeah. Oh, come on. Um. What do you call a man with a rubber toe? What do you call a man with a rubber toe? Yeah. What do you call him? Roberto. Roberto, as in rubber toe. I got you. Okay. Again, the show is free. Oh my goodness. <laughs> no, Linda. That's great. That's great. That's great. Um, okay. So now, now back to the fun drone stuff. Um, if you want to submit a video for viewer video of the week, you can do that at Ken Heron Upload uh, at gmail.com. Ken Heron Upload at gmail.com. And people do send me things that. Uh, don't quite make it to the viewer video of the week. They send me all kinds of things. And I've got this one thing from James Molesworth. He shared a dusk flight from huh, Corumbra in Victoria, Australia. Now, a lot of people, when they're flying drones, they will be jerky and go over left and right. You know what I mean, Linda? I mean, they're just not very, uh, very straight. And I was very yeah, happy. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and it's hard to do, actually, to, to fly in a very straight line. Well, James did it, and uh, I put some music to it. And uh, the original video was probably about 10 minutes long, but I put this together using his video. So uh, enjoy this. This is uh, Dusk in Australia. <laughs> Every time I see a video like this, I say, I gotta get my passport. Such a beautiful country. Isn't that awesome? You ever been to Australia, Linda? I haven't, no. You're from the Netherlands. That's right. And uh, I don't know uh, if everybody knows this, but Linda can speak Dutch. Mm. Here we go. Tell me how beautiful this is in Dutch, please. This hill moy. Uh huh. Go on. Let's see the hill moy act. <sighs> I like it when she strings more than three words together, but thank you, Linda. That's very nice. <laughs> it's something you have to keep in mind when you're uh, filming stuff later on when you have to edit it, what it's going to look like. It was a pleasure to edit this video. And there's so many people watching that film things, but don't edit. And um, if you want to just send me it, if you have some awesome footage like this, and if I have time, 
Feel free to send it to me. If you want me to put it together for you, I'd be happy to do that. I know that some people love droning and and don't have time to edit or don't know how. Ken Heron upload at gmail.com. I love that. That was awesome. Thanks again. And uh, there's a link in the description if you want to find more of his videos. James Molesworth. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, all right. Coming up. Like I said, Gary, the everyday dad, he's got a great channel. Here's his, here's his logo right there. Maybe you're familiar with it. What are people saying in the chitty chat? That's not, they're basically not just talking anybody. about like how beautiful Australia is and just some general banter, nothing too crazy. Okay. Well, hello everybody. And uh, if you celebrate Christmas, Merry Christmas to you. Do you like the background? Is it distracting? I like it. Okay. And, and also, happy winter solstice. Oh, that's right. That's today. Yeah. At least it's winter here. I suppose in Australia, it's summer over there. But yeah, this is the shortest day of the year for us here in the Northern Hemisphere. So, Linda, I kind of, I kind of want to give away the drone right now. I know we usually wait until later. Do you want to do that, or do you want to see? A really cool looking relic from the Second World War. It's up to you, Linda. First, before I decide, hmm. some people are complaining that the audio levels are very low. Is there something that you're seeing on your end that would support that? No. Okay. No. I but... say we give away the drone and then do the relic next. Okay. Very good. So, uh, this Predator drone I featured before on the channel. I'm not a huge fan of it. And it's, it's kind of, how would I describe it? Uh, <laughs> I don't, I, I don't want to undersell it and not have people want it. I mean, it's, it's a cool drone, 720p camera. It's got legs on it that stay on most of the time. Um, okay. Well, anyway, there it is. It's a beautiful, beautiful box. So I'm going to put that there and let's just go ahead and do this contest and get it out of the way. Let's do it. All right. So I'm going to show you a still from one of my videos. And all you have to do is tell me the title of the video that this is from. There it is. There is a still. Nice overalls. Uh, thanks. That is here. I in would say that I would say that overall that image is nice. Oh, mm. oh. Bravo, bravo, Linda. Very good. Yeah. So, I'm going to leave that picture up just a couple more seconds so you can you can drink in the gorgeousness of it. All right, that's all you get. Now, the first person to chat the real title of that video will win the will win the drone. And in the meantime, I'll remind everybody as Linda looks out for the winner that Super Chat is on right now. I am running out of uh, pigeon jerky, but I'll make more, of course. I've got the net, and I will go down to the city square and scoop up some pigeons and make more jerky. I've got the eyeballs here. Somebody's already got it. They did? Mm-hmm. Did they get it? Who yeah. got it? Do you I'm know? I'm not entirely sure who the worst first was because there's different iterations. Of, like, the word order is changing around a little bit, but... Yeah. Uh, let well, me see. the title... Five, the title just, has uh, four words in it. It's yeah, a four word. Somebody, somebody posted it and it was Walter O. Mueller. Okay. Congratulations. <laughs> you just got yourself a fantastic drone. This thing, it's got a 9K camera on it. Uh, nine. Yeah, 9K. And um, what else does it have? It's got... Um, it's got five propellers. You can't see the fifth one right now, but there is a fifth one. This goes 70 miles an hour. And it perks. press. We got ourselves super chat from Jack Bisson. It, it perks coffee and predicts earthquakes too. Jack Bisson, thank you so much, my friend. And by the way, uh, I believe we have a video later on from Jack. Oh, well, that'll be nifty. Yeah. 
I just want to go on record and say that the name I just announced for the contest winner, that that may change. A lot of <laughs> responses came in so fast. I yes. just want to make sure that I'm 100% accurate. So I have to kind of scroll back through it. It's hard to do that. Right, 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 right. So. Of course, I'll go back later and look. I'll go back later and, and make sure. Okay. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and do the, the story about the emergency landing. I was sent an email from Mike. You may have seen his username up here a few times. RSP Drone Photography. Yeah, yeah. And he's an actual real real pilot. Not to say that drone pilots aren't real, but he's a pilot of a real actual plane that you can ride in. And this is what he says. He says, hey, Ken, Mike from RSP Drone Photography in Wichita Falls, Texas. Thought you would get a kick out of this. This was back in 2010 when I was flying back from Seaside, Oregon, to Renton Field, south of Seattle, Washington, when I had engine failure. The local news was about to go live with a different plane landing when they heard my emergency declaration. They followed me into the airport and interviewed me afterwards. Enjoy. So this is Mike, RSP drone on, uh, photography on the news. And his friend were coming back from Hoquiam with their two dogs. They were just north of downtown Seattle when the left engine just conked out. Now, they were 2,500 feet up in the air and a long ways from a safe landing here. Just for a second, pretend you're pilot Mike Young. You're in this twin engine plane flying just above Chopper 7 when one engine goes out. See it motionless there on the right. This is what it looked like on the outside, and this is what it felt like on the inside. This is real. This is, this is actually happening. Young tells us he has just about 70 flight hours in twin engine planes. These last few minutes this afternoon undoubtedly stand out. When you practice the loss of an engine, hoping that it'll never happen to you, and, and then it just kind of hit me. Wow, this is, this is the real deal. This is the real thing. I better... Uh, better follow procedures here and get us home safe. He declared an emergency with the control tower. They cleared airspace for him. Then his nerves gave way to his training. You feather the prop so that the prop is right directly in line with the wind so that you can lower the amount of drag. Uh, and then you just shut everything down and that ends up being a dead engine in the air. Young says the moment of truth came when he had the straightaway to land. As soon as his plane was lined up for the runway, he had a good feeling it would end like this, safe and sound. Good. <laughs> it felt great. Uh, I, I was very thankful and uh, very glad that the uh, right engine kept running and uh, got us back. Now, maybe a tribute to his calm and to his skill. The two dogs that they had with him, that was a French bulldog and a little pug. <laughs> they were asleep in the back of the plane. They didn't wake up during all of this. Live in Renton, Monique Minglov in wow. 7 Eyewitness News. Wow, very cool. You know, a lot of people, they, they don't... Huh? What they don't what they don't tell you is that those props don't only keep the plane aloft they also serve as air conditioner because i bet when that prop went off it got hot in there yeah not not only that uh, oh thank you uh aldi moore 29.99 super chat i i guess they took a penny out i've never seen that before but thank you so much aldi moore that's real nice i'm always touched when people contribute to the channel Anyway, you know, a lot of people uh, don't realize, uh, and, and, and some people think when you lose an engine on a plane, uh, uh, well, certainly a single engine plane, uh, a double engine plane, that you're going to drop out of the sky. That doesn't happen. Other people think that you'll just glide in, everything will be fine, but it really does affect, especially the yaw, you know, because one engine is pulling the other way. And anyway, I'm not a plane pilot, but I do know these things. I watch the Discovery Channel. Yeah. Yeah. So you're basically a pro. I'm basically a pro. Yeah, I've yeah. Uh, I've flown sure. many hours of video games, so I know I could probably uh, bring a 727 down on my own. <laughs> All right, uh, just a couple minutes to bring Gary, the everyday dad, in. But before that, are you ever confused about the DJI updates for your products? You ever? I'm just confused right now. Where am I? <laughs> are you ever what wondering? What is going on within those updates? That's a rhetorical question. Of course you are. And uh, I've I knew got... it was rhetorical. That's why I didn't answer. Okay. Well, yeah. I've got uh, some information, and there's a link in the description to this video. Our buddy from Australia, 
uh, has provided uh, this really cool website. It's a DJI wiki site. And I'm going to bring Is this that up. Is that Greg Kennard that, that yes, you're about? Yes, it's our buddy Greg. Oh, okay. And it will show you for each and every update what exactly they've done. These are all the things that they've done, and not every update is for every uh, drone. I mean, you could have a Phantom, and you'd be getting updates for a different, you know what I mean? Like, they, there's so many things in here that, do, do you need them? Maybe you don't. But thank you, Greg, for providing that. Look at all that stuff. This is something you should know, and there's a link in the description. Cool. Cool. Uh, one more thing. Let's go ahead and tease our pal Dana. I know he's watching. Hello, Dana. He'll return as co-host after Christmas. He's doing shows in Nashville at the Grand Old Opry. I had the pleasure of going last week. Put on a great show, Diamond Rio. Mm, great band. So, <clears throat> Linda, are you a peeler? I am most definitely a peeler. It's one of the things I do enjoy the most about getting new electronics is getting that little plastic off of it. But yeah. I know Dana doesn't feel quite the same way. No, Dana is not a peeler. He leaves the stuff on his... I'm trying to... F okay, here we go. I'm trying to find... Uh, hey, Dana? I just got a new... I, I have a video that is specifically for Dana. Here you go. Hey, Dana. I just got a new gizmo. It's an HDMI monitor. Oh, it's got a protective film on it. I should probably leave that on in case I want to sell it again one day. <laughs> or somebody shoots at it with bullets. <laughs> <laughs> nope, not gonna. Oh, Dana. Oh. Oh, oh man. Oh, man. Yes, ah. That's what you get. Yeah. Yeah. He's got old. He's got an old laptop. It's just the plastic looks so, horrible. So I guess basically what just happened is that now I'm basically permanently your co-host because after this, Dana's <laughs> not even going to want to talk to you again. Well, I'm trying to peel shame him is what I'm doing. Hashtag yeah. peel shame. And yeah. I need I need your help, people. I need you to upload. Send me a link to you peeling. The film off of new gizmos. Ken That's Heron upload. Terrible. I know. I'm gonna make a. Now you just mean. I, I'm gonna make a compilation of people peeling peeling the film off of their new gizmos, and I already got one from someone. Here you go. Enjoy this one, Dana. Ken, I got another video for Dana. Maybe we should make a compilation. Ooh, ooh, ooh! Like a bandaid, just rip it off. Oh yeah. <laughs> You know, you also just got your privileges revoked going backstage at the Grand Ole Opry, too, I believe. <laughs> every, every peel is just, it peels away a layer of your friendship. Yeah, probably. I love you, Dana. <laughs> I love you, Dana, but please send in more peeling videos. It'll be very appealing, to say the least. All right, so it's about that time All right. to bring in the Everyday Dad. I do want to play something for you first so that... Those who aren't familiar with him will be able to recognize him. This is from his channel. This is what you see when you go to his channel. This is him right here. To the everyday dad, if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. I truly, truly believe that. I'm Gary. I'm the everyday dad. I grew up later in life. I found my confidence later in life. I really, really think that any of us, with a little bit of hard work and effort, we can do anything we put our mind to. Look at me, I have a very average education. I am not the smartest, I'm not the strongest, I'm not the fastest. But here at The Everyday Dad, I want you to learn and to gain the confidence to do what you wanna do, watching me learn and do things that I've never done before. We do that here in a variety of ways. So far on the channel, we've covered learning how to ride a motorcycle, learning how to do 3D printing, and just recently being a certified drone pilot and trying to start my first business. We release videos daily at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time or noon, however you wanna, however you wanna say it. The point of the channel is to be a vehicle. I want this channel to be a vehicle for you to see that if somebody like me, a totally average everyday person, <laughs> can accomplish these things, you can do it. If you want to see that average people can do anything, click that subscribe button. We'd love to have you here. All right. So that was a little 
bit of self-deprecation, wasn't it? Mm. I'm not the prettiest. I'm not the strongest. I'm kind of flatulent. I'm the everyday dad. So let's try to bring him in. Now, here's where the show goes off the rails. <laughs> All right. Let's do it. <laughs> oh, oh, everything was pretty smooth up until now. First thing yeah, I'm going to well, do, I'm going to open up a little bit of bandwidth by killing the Razzmatazz. I've been told that the Razzmatazz is bad. I still okay. love it anyway. So, all right, over to me as you uh, wait patiently, and I go ahead and I bring him in here. I add to the call. And uh, how does this work there? You know, us old people, we don't know how to do it. And I, I click that button, and then I do that. And then we call. Yay! Let's see what happens. Come on, Gary. Come on. Anything? There he is! Hey! It's okay. Hey, man. Welcome to the show. Well, thanks for having me. Hey, uh, can you turn up your audio just a smidge? Yeah. Just a just a smidge there. Is that is that better? There you go. Hey, uh, uh, Linda, Gary, Gary, Linda. Linda, Kent, thanks for having me on. I'm I'm gonna be honest. I've been meaning to make a new channel trailer for a long time, so you kind of caught me off guard. Oh. I was kind of doing my own doing my own little cringing there. Oh, okay. A little bit pretty funny. Well, it it it, <laughs> it kind of describes your channel, but uh, what what else? Why else should people come visit you on your channel? Oh well, hey, if you just like checking out some some gear, learning how to do gear as just a regular kind of person, like camera stuff or drones or gimbals or action cameras, that's what we that's what we do. We have a lot of fun doing it. Um, we do do a live stream every Saturday. Uh, it's me and my wife, the everyday wife, and we have a we have <laughs> the everyday wife. Pretty pretty fun channel. And what and what's her name? Yeah, yeah. that's what. Her name's Kelly. It's Kelly. she's actually watching right now. I, I, okay. I think she's watching downstairs. Okay. Hello, Kelly. And um, well, she's she's not gonna be able to hear, but hey, we're, hey. we're on we're on the TV. Hey. So uh, you're the everyday dad. I guess clearly you're happy being a dad. How many kids do you have? I have one kid. Just one. How old is your offspring? He is five. Five. And uh, he's awesome. Uh, he's awesome. We, we get him in the channel every now and again, but, and we, we talked about this on a live stream about a week ago. I, I try to get him in, but I also at the same time try not to, cause it, I don't know. It's kind of weird, right? To, to have a five-year-old on, on a live stream. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I mean, if there are there other five-year-olds, is he doing something particularly cute? I mean, I think he's cute. <laughs> well, of course. I, I yeah. Mean, See, that's the, that's I'm, the thing. I'm a little, I'm a little biased. That's the thing with new, and new parents. I guess you're still a new parent at five. You know, you're going to fill up your Facebook page with, oh, look, he, he rolled over today and all that. Did you do that? He did all that stuff? Well, my wife did that. I was not, um, I was deployed when he was born. So I, I spent like the first eight months uh, not being there. It actually worked out pretty well. So one of the jokes I make with my wife is, uh, I don't know why everybody complains about this baby thing. Like, he was sleeping <laughs> through the night when I first saw him. So she doesn't. She doesn't appreciate that joke. Okay, and you say you were deployed. Uh, you're in what uh, what branch of the service? Oh, I'm I'm uh, I'm in the army right now. Mm -hmm. It it's not something that I really talk about on the channel too much. Um, it's something I try to keep that separate from the channel. But uh, yeah, it just worked out that way. Being the everyday dad, I guess. Okay, so you don't want to talk about it since we're talking about it. <laughs> okay, but I thank you for your service. Uh, Linda is oh, also. Hey, I appreciate it. Linda was also in the in the army. You guys can both kick my ass. Uh, so <laughs> l let's go ahead and take a quick uh, Q and A from people, and then I've got a video from you that I'll share. Absolutely. If anybody has a question for hey, the everyday I did dad, say if I if I was ever able to get on your live stream, I do want to compliment your motorcycle. I think you showed it a couple live streams ago. That's, oh. that's a beautiful bike. Oh, thanks. Yeah, it's a. It's old. It's uh. It's almost 13 years old now, 2005. But I, I keep it, it nice because I never ride it. <laughs> it tried to kill me a few <laughs> that's, times. So that's the trick. Yeah, I can't bring I trick, can't bring myself just... to selling it. Uh, okay, so somebody says that the buffering, it's buffering, it's buffering. I am recording this, and will upload the non-buffering edition later on. So, I apologize for the buffering. Maybe if I bring the Rasmataz back. That'll screw it up even more. No, no razzmatazz. All right. 
So uh, if anybody has any questions, just go ahead and uh, and chat away. What was the last thing that you did? What's the last video that you posted? Oh, I just posted a video about the Apple AirPods on Wednesday, but the video I'm excited about is the one that I kind of sent you some clips of today. I'm doing a uh, what I think is the best drone of 2017. You know, what I call my boy Blue back here. Uh-huh. Uh, the Spark. Okay. And why do you so like the Spark? that's coming out tomorrow. I'm why do you like excited. the Spark so much? What is it about the Spark that you like? Well, just because... Um, I think this year I've had six drones. Yeah, I've had the Phantom 4. I had a Phantom 4 Advance. I have had both of the Mavics. Well, not the Alpine White, so I guess two of the three Mavics. But I think the Spark just meets like a... a war There's five things, and I think it just meets like all of the... It may not be the best, but with the convenience, price, and quality you get out of it, I think it's one of the most amazing pieces of tech made this year, maybe in the last five years, just because... You know, I think drones are intimidating for people, probably not the people that are watching this, but um, having only started flying drones in the last six or seven months, or seven, a, a number of months, um, I think they're intimidating to people that do not normally fly them. So I think the Spark does a great job in bringing people in, and that's one of the best. I, I gush about it all the time. I love it. Okay, and you, of course you fly with the controller. Nobody likes the Spark by flying it any other way because the hand gestures are just a gimmick i think they're terrible they're terrible yeah i i've tried using them and people in the comments try to help me out and i tried doing it but i've been using the spark for i got it the, as soon as it came out and i have never gotten that wave to work i think i've gotten it to work twice hmm. never consistently gotten the wave to work well I, I think it's a hoax okay well i i do have a question here uh, for you uh every day dad which is worse failing or never trying that's deep. Ooh. The floor is yours. Mm. I would say never trying. Because if you never try, then you can't fail. And we learn more from our failures than anything from our success. Because success breeds complacency. Failure is where you learn lessons. Mic drop. You are a good dad. You're, you're going to be. <laughs> I felt like my dad was teaching me a life lesson right there. Do you tell good bedtime stories? Or does mom do uh, it? Who does the bedtime stories I, in the house? The mom does the bedtime stories. Oh, okay. When I do bedtime, it's just brush your teeth. Let's go to bed. I'm tired. Let's let's go to bed. Yeah, I think if I had a, a kid, and I probably do somewhere, I, I would have a, <laughs> a lot of uh, sound effects. <laughs> Linda's shaking her head. Hey, the '80s was a blur. I don't know. You know who knows? <laughs> so uh, yeah, I'd probably have a lot of sound. I'd have sound effects that are like once upon a time there was a box there. <laughs> you know that kind of thing. Uh, Cocaine is a hell of a drug. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, bye. Merry Goodbye, Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Uh, you know what? Chicken butt. I forgot to do. I forgot to do. And if you'll indulge me for a moment. Oh, and here's your logo. Sorry about that, everyday dad. I forgot to do the mail. I've got some mail. So, uh, mail singers. Get the mail. Email. We get email. Today. Okay, well, it's not email. It's an it's actual mail. And if you want to send me an actual mail, you can do that. Here is my address. Just go ahead and send me something that uh, doesn't tick. Uh, feel free. Whatever you want. Packages. Anything. There's my address right there. So, I got this thing. This is from David Yeager. And David Yeager has sent me stuff before. And there's really, there's nothing I like more than a package from David Yeager. Because David Yeager skips the whole writing the letter thing and just sends candy. David works <laughs> at a candy factory. Can you see this? It's just, I, there's no letter in there, no explanation as to what's going on here. Yeah, there, there you go. Is now there you can see. Better it. job to have. Yeah, he works at the Airheads factory. You like Airheads? Who who does not like Airheads? Yeah, and uh, they make Airheads and Mentos. So this time, I just hit the jackpot with Airheads and Mentos, and I thank you, David Jeter, for that. That's the mailbag. That's it. <laughs> I opened that up. I kept I kept looking. I was like, what is there? There's got to be. What what's going on? There's no letter in there. There's no like, hey. 
enjoying the show. There's just candy. Um, thank you. That's awesome. People are odd. Um, his dentist is bribing him to make sure that uh, he stays in business. Yeah, no kidding. Oh, by the way, what kind of drones do you have? Somebody wants to know. Oh, I currently have the Spark and the Mavic Pro Platinum. Okay. Maybe I'll check out that goiter, that goiter Phantom when it comes out. Yeah. Yeah, that's supposed to be the real deal, man. It's got... Um, I have an image here I wanted to share uh, of that. We're talking about the new Phantom 4 RTK drone, and it's got some really fantastic pinpoint... Th now, this is for mapping. This is what people use for mapping. Here's an example right here. The difference between the standard Phantom 4 and the high precision right there. As far okay. as satellites, you can get within 500 centimeters with a regular one and five centimeters. So with mapping applications, wow. that is really going to help you a lot. So that's cool. I just like to take bad pictures and wreck my drone. So maybe I'll get the cheaper version of that. Hopefully there's like an, a goiter light or something. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. Hopefully the, the Phantom 5. Have you heard anything about the Phantom 5? Linda, have you heard have anything not, about the Phantom 5? I'm waiting with bated breath. Are you no, going to I haven't heard anything. Are you are you going to get one as soon as it comes out? Me? No. Either one of you. Uh, Gary? I'll probably get it just cuz I I have a I have a problem not getting technology stuff. But my my other spare bedroom is just full of junk that uh f that fuels a YouTube channel. I know what you mean. I've got an entire room just filled with Amazon boxes. Um, yeah, that's that's something that you don't. That nobody explains that <laughs> when uh, in the how to make a YouTube video video, they never explain that once people start sending you stuff, uh, you have where do you get rid of all the boxes? Like you have a very serious relationship with your recycling guy because the, you got to figure out how to get all rid of all the boxes. Well, I tell you what, right here in Tennessee, we just burn it. <laughs> There's no regulations. Heck, they don't even ask the people to inspect their cars. You know that there's no inspection of vehicles in Tennessee? That's yeah, crazy. I'm in Georgia. It's the same way. That's crazy. That's crazy. So you see, like, these farm trucks that are just falling apart on the road. Who cares? No inspection. <laughs> Yeehaw. <laughs> uh, okay. So, yeah, as far as the Phantom 5, what they do all the time, uh, and they, by they, I mean DJI, they will release it in other countries that are not mine. And then I have to watch Hans in Germany talking all about the new Phantom that Ken can't have, ha ha. And then I have to wait a month or two more before I can get my hands on one. So yes, it's, it's a tragedy, a little, little bitter. So now this video that you sent me here, I will show it, but I can't play the audio. I hope that's not gonna ruin it. Um, well, that's, I mean, it, it, that's fine. It, it, just imagine in your mind, people watching at home, that there's a beat that it's edited to. Maybe I can. How Just long does it it's, take? It's the most awesome. It's the most awesome music editing you've ever heard. Oh. You can't hear it. Well, how, how, how many seconds until YouTube flags my video? Oh, it's that's, it's, that's uh, it. That's it's it. YouTube's music. Oh, it is. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, I didn't that's know music that. From YouTube's. Oh well, there you YouTube's go. There, yeah, okay. There you go. Now we can play the awesome beat. So where is this? That's out at uh, Clark's Hill Lake. Uh, it's a lake by my house. That's where I do the majority of my flying. Okay. Is that a man-made lake? It is. It's actually a man-made lake. There's a dam there that I got asked to leave today because uh, they had apparently have some kind of new uh, rule against drone flying. But uh, it oh. ended up working out pretty well. Got to got to hang out, fly the spark somewhere else. But it's a yeah, it's a big lake. They made a dam. Uh, flooded a valley. It's a pretty nice place. Okay, back up. You're burying the lead. You got kicked out. Tell me, tell me what happened. Oh, so I was trying to do like a cool overhead shot with my Mavic as I attempted to not fall down the rock face, and two uh, very nice. I want to say they're very nice because I did give them like my channel information. So if you're watching right now, you were very nice. I appreciate the uh, the professionalism when you were kicking me out of the uh, the dam. Mm. Uh, but yeah, they just came up, said hey. Uh, we we have a new rule where you're not allowed to fly next to the dam because I guess a couple, maybe like a 
kilometer or two away from it, there's a hydroelectric plant, and they're coming up with new rules to fly around it. Now, but they hold don't on. You flying near it, the uh, near the electric. Plant. Is this the dam's rule or is this the state's rule? That's where I draw the distinction. I think it's the state rule because they're state workers, but they work at the dam. Okay, because a lot of because this is South Carolina. This is South Carolina because I live on the uh, the border of Georgia and South Carolina. Yeah. And so that was, I believe, a South Carolina like state ranger park person. Oh. The uniform okay. was green. All right, yeah, all, right, okay. all, right, all right. I don't, I don't want to seem like a, a rebel, but a lot of authority figures aren't informed about this stuff, and they were very often just say, "Yep, that's what the rules say. No drone flying, just a blanket." When in fact, there's other ways that you can well and no in fact here are the permutations of of the rules that you should probably know being a person with a badge but anyway it's, i've run into that more times than not especially in state parks Absolutely. Um, state parks here in tennessee the rule is you can't take off or land within the state park but you can fly in from another location and that little bit that little tidbit seems to elude a lot of the authority figures but anyway this, this you will learn as you uh as you if you're new to the droning community, you will find out these things. Slowly but surely. Yeah. Uh, RC Quad Noob says, woot woot for South Carolina. Lexington here. Hello. Uh, South Carolina has no rules. Very nice. Do you have the helmet law in South Carolina on a motorcycle? I don't, actually. You can, you can ride a motorcycle with no helmet. That is the scariest thing I've ever heard. I So I was actually, and I, I had a video about this. I was in a motorcycle accident. Um a couple of months ago and I had full gear on and it's still like totally stunk. So I can't imagine uh, like falling off your motorcycle or somebody hitting you without any, like without a helmet on. I mean, I guess, I guess that makes it easier cause I don't understand half helmets. Cause I mean, if you're going to survive with like a, not a head injury, but like a jaw injury. Yeah. I, I don't know. I not lived to, in, not to like, totally I lived in uh, the... Columbia, South Carolina for a little bit and I had my motorcycle. And I just thought, I just see these knuckleheads out there on, on the road with no helmet on, cigarette hanging out of their mouth, uh, uh, you know, their, their long uh, beard hair just going in the wind, and they're riding, you know, the, the loud bikes. Not the, the I don't want to get into it, but what kind of bike do you have? I have a Yamaha FZ07. Okay, there you go, okay. So, you got the cool bike. <laughs> right. I got to tell her. It's neon yellow. I don't know how cool it could be. Yeah, if, if you're... In a state that doesn't have a helmet law, you must have great trauma centers. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> and now I I have talked my way into a corner and I apologize, but I'm gonna have to tell a joke. I the, hope this the music makes it sound good. This is my one Harley joke. And please, I apologize. I know I'm anticipating a bunch of thumbs down, but I'll tell you the story. Uh, when I first told this joke, I was working at a radio station in Texas and they pulled me up on stage and they were, it was a motorcycle rally and there were no sport bikes there and I'm sport bike guy. And I don't know if you know, but sport bikes and couch cruisers, they kind of, they clash sometimes. So anyway, I thought yeah. it'd be funny to tell this one joke that I know. And, and if you want, I'll tell it to you, but I don't want this to reflect poorly on me or my guests or my channel. So what are the people in the chit chat say? Do you want to hear the joke? Because some people might get their panties in a wad about it. Don't Harley, do yeah. it is my Harley, advice right Harley, now. <laughs> Harleys are the man bike. Yes, of course. Yes. Okay. All right. So no, no on the joke. Okay. But no, it, no, no. I really want no. to. I mean, I'm see, curious. You're going to regret that. See, now, now, I can't leave it like this. This is like a show that has an unexploded bomb. You can't not ex you can't show a bomb on TV and not have it explode. It's yeah, very but it's a drone show, not can't. a motorcycle show. Okay, it's let's just leave like it. You can't have an unboxing without taking the peel off the uh, screen. That's right. Let's leave it up to Eric. Oh, Eric says go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll go ahead and tell my joke. What's the difference? <laughs> What's the difference between a Harley Davidson and a vacuum cleaner? The location of the dirt bag. 
<laughs> Good night. Merry Christmas. Dad, you, you legitimately got me to laugh on that one. Uh, okay. I apologize. I love all motorcycles. Two wheels. I'm, I'm good with it. Okay. Now back to the drone show. So, <coughs> so there are drones. There's these things that fly yeah. and they take pictures. Yeah. Yeah. I've heard about those. Uh, do they attach cameras to them? All right. You know, Linda was scheduled to meet up with a client about now. And I know Kelly from Ready, Set, Drone is waiting in the wings to hop on. We're about five minutes late. I apologize, Kelly. So here's, here's the problem. Do I have enough bandwidth for three people? <laughs> I don't dare no, do I that. Do. What do you think, Linda? Should I say goodbye to... Who should I say goodbye to to bring Kelly in? Should we leave oh, it up to... That. You, I, I can leave and... Well, no, I don't want to be. I don't want to be rude. By the way, there's your logo, everyday dad, right there. There you go. So let, <laughs> let's leave it up to the the chatters. Who do you want to hang up? <laughs> Does that mean? Does that mean? I got. I gotta let one of them go. That's mean. This we is could, like we could rocks paper scissors. Yeah, it's like the Sophie's Choice of uh, of streaming. One day I'll live in a city with fiber. I tell you what. Uh, Everyday Dad, is there anything you would like to promote before uh, we let you go? Hey, I just want to say, Linda, Ken, thanks very much for having me on. Like, I, I don't watch a lot of live streams because live streams are generally boring, but You're I think right. you guys do a fantastic job here. Keep up the good work. And if you guys want to learn something about gimbals, action cameras, or drones, uh, come check out the Everyday Dad. We have a, it's a great place to have fun. Wonderful. We do a live stream every Saturday at 8 p.m. Eastern. And you can learn along with you, and the world will be a better place for it. Uh, <laughs> absolutely. Thank you very much, and a uh, big hello to your, your wife, Kelly, and your little five-year-old. Good luck to you, and there's a link in the description if you want to check out Gary's channel. Thanks. Thanks so much, Ken. Okay, now I hit that button, and then it's just Linda. Oh, I did. I figured it out. Now you over. did it. I did. I know. I did it. All right. Now, uh, let's bring Kelly in. Ah, oh, dear. Hang on. We gotta turn on some music. This is the Ken figuring out Skype music. Now, what do I hit the button there? Are we recording? Is it, what are we doing? Is it, is it taking a picture? You have to make sure there's no gunk in the mouse. There we go. All right. All right. Hey, hey, hey. hey it's Kelly hey, from Ready, Set, Drown. Hey, welcome to the show, man. Thank you, man. I, I, I feel bad that uh, you had to kick Everyday Dad off to get me on. Oh, that's all right. He was, he's a good guy, and I will have him back on again one day. Well, I, I feel honored. Thank you very much. Uh, how are you guys tonight? It's been a good show. Well, thanks. Thanks. Yeah, coming up on an hour. Uh, thanks to everybody who super chatted. That's really nice of you. Um, it is. It's, it is the season, right? Yeah. What's new with you, man? What, what, what do you got going on? Oh, goodness, goodness. Um, you know, Everyday Dad said it well. Uh, when you when you get to the point where people start sending you stuff, they they tend to <laughs> send you a lot of stuff. And uh, they, they sent quite a bit for the holidays. I got a really cool electric skateboard that we've been playing with. I think... The second one, not not the first one, but right. a better one. Uh, and then a uh, bunch of stuff from MJ MJXRC, like the bug stuff. I have several bugses that uh, I hadn't flown yet. Okay, and I saw that you got something from Energen. You got one. Yes. You, yeah. And uh, Dude, I, as a matter of fact, I meant to watch your I meant to watch your review because um, I thought that thing was the coolest. I don't I don't know if your review was positive or not, but I was oh. really impressed with the quality of it and the. Yeah, everything about it. I love it. And I think everybody else thinks it's cool, except for the price. The price is a little high on that. It's like $500. Yeah, yeah. I, I've only... So did you get the big one that does uh, unique uh, Phantom and Mavic? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I haven't played with that one. I, I have the Mavic only one, the M10, which I think is only about 120 bucks. Okay. Do you know if the big one that I have here can charge uh, the Spark? 
Why wouldn't it? Right? I mean, I think... uh, it, it wouldn't because it wouldn't have the right cable. Okay. Now I know it. But, it comes with. Uh, it but comes with USB. These... You could you could potentially do it over USB, you... right? Okay. Yeah, I know that, but you can't. People were asking me about Inspires too. You can't charge an Inspire through USB. I know that. But well, uh... and so so what I think they've done that's really brilliant is they have uh, made the unit separate from the cable, right? So mm -hmm. if, if a new Mavic comes out or a new whatever comes out with a different battery, uh, hopefully you don't have to trash the whole thing. You can just get a different cable for it. That's right. Yeah, and they have cables for everything. It's a, it's a really, really well-made unit. It's, it's heavy and it's pricey. Yeah. But it's, if and I think, it, I think that big one, that's the, is that, what is it, the a, A40 or something? Yeah, what is it a, called? A40, yep. I, I think that thing is like... 20,000 or 25,000 milliamp hours. It's crazy how much power that thing has. Oh, yeah. I charged four Phantom batteries, and the level didn't go down at all. So I could probably have done wow. that a couple more times. Yeah. Yeah, I, I kind of wonder if you could carry that on a plane or not. Uh, that, oh. That big – might be too much, huh? Yeah, that's that's a lot of lithium. Yeah. <laughs> really, yeah. That, that's, a, that's a bomb waiting to happen. I doubt they would let you. Although – it had to have gotten into the country somehow on a plane, I guess, or a ship. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. I guess if you discharged it, maybe, or something like that. But, um, yeah, and then, man, I, I have to say, I hadn't even heard of this new Phantom until I saw your email earlier today. And so I've been checking it out. It looks pretty awesome for mapping people. Yeah, yeah, it looks, it looks interesting. I mean, uh, I don't think your average person would, would have a need for this, but if you're into mapping it's an absolute must-have as it's but, got but a little... you also know that um dji does already have um that that uh gps unit as a as its own thing with a ground station right oh no so you can apply that to your the drone that you already have uh, yeah i think it's made for the matrice but um and and again i only found this out uh because i started poking around today um, it's called the DRTK GNN GNSS, and so it's its own uh, it's its own um, GPS unit that that uh, is the same accuracy. It's basically I think they miniaturized this external thing and put it on a Phantom for for what you were looking at. Okay, now you are so, you are the drone master. Everybody knows that, and we bow down and kneel before you. Do you oh have, wow! No, do you, no need for that. No need for that. <laughs> I will tell you too something else that's kind of cool. I just got a Osmo Pro, um, which has the uh, what is that camera? The uh, Zenmuse uh, X5 on it, and so I'm pretty excited about that. Linda, are you uh, familiar with that camera? Yeah, I mean I haven't used it, but I'm aware of its existence and some of what it can do. Well, I've been using a GoPro uh, Karma Grip with a GoPro 5, and I think this is a huge step up from that. So I'm pretty psyched about yeah. that. Well, I wanted sure. to ask. Quality on those GoPros is pretty, pretty bad. Yeah, I wanted to ask the drone yeah. master. Uh, have you heard any rumors about the Phantom Five? Uh, I have, I have not. Uh, I, I, I did actually talk to somebody at DJI uh, when I got the goggles and was asking about a. I, I was thinking there might be a racing drone coming out with it, and I was told that, uh, to the best of this guy's knowledge, and he's pretty knowledgeable. Uh, there's no racing drone in the works, but I haven't broached any topics about the Phantom 5 yet. I mean, I would think it would be a spring release if it is going to come out, um, given, you know, it's too late for Christmas. And right. last time they, they released the Spark in May, right? So I would think if they're going to do a big release, they might do it around April, May time frame. Now, Kelly, I believe we have a special uh, viewer out there. Isn't there a special viewer that you wanted to say hello to? I believe. Oh, he's in. He's in the kitchen doing the dishes. Oh, is he? Actually, so, oh, okay. Yeah. All right. I wanted to say hi to your dad. I, I, I actually, it's funny because I don't know. If, I think you know, Ken. I've been doing these um, for the last four weeks. I've done these things for Force One on on Wednesday nights. Right. Uh, you you tuned into a couple of them, and I'm telling you, just from they're on Facebook, and they get a crazy number of viewers. I think we had um, over a thousand last night, and then the views on it. I don't know what they're doing to promote it. But anyway, uh, basically, I'm going on. I'm kind of reviewing these Force One drones, which are basically they're they're clones of other drones. But then they throw in extra things like skins and extra batteries and uh, like an action camera comes with one of them. You know, it's basically a Bugs 3. 
And so you're paying a premium price, but you're getting a few more things. And they're, you know, they're they're basically MJRC uh, drones, so they're good. But all of that said, uh, I did the program last night. My son has been on it with me the last few weeks, but he had some teeth out uh, this week, and he wasn't feeling well. So my father-in-law went on, and he killed it. He was great. Uh, we're having some some buffering problems. I think uh, I lost Lindy. You there still? Yeah, I'm still here. There's apparently problems with buffering and also some audio concerns. Yeah, well, uh, I, from from me or or overall. Just yeah, overall. It was okay. fine with uh, the everyday dad, but then you came on here with your with your boss bandwidth, Man. taking up all the bandwidth. Look at that. Uh oh my goodness. Uh, I don't know That's what I microphone. did. Oh no, I was going smoothly, and then now Linda's gone. Linda, you still there? I'm still there. Okay. Would you hang I up? Because I got to bring you. All right, Kim. Well, the, the... What's that? No, not you. I was gonna say I I can I can let you go then if if uh, if we're no, killing. No, you're not killing it, man. You stick around forever, buddy. I lost oh. Linda though. I can't can't bring her. Okay. Look, uh, it's coming up on an hour. Uh, I did want to do a, a quick Q and A with you while we still. If no, it's buffering. Okay. So that's not going to happen. All right. Let me go. I'll say goodbye to, to both you and Linda, and I'll redial Linda up. Thank you very much for being on the show, sir. Okay. All right. Good chatting, good chatting with you, Ken. And, and we'll, we'll talk to you soon. Actually, my father-in-law just came in. So oh, you, Merry Christmas. If you get a chance to say hi to, hi to, hi to John. He's Hello, uh, John. right here now. John, I just want to let you know, buddy. Great show. You, you. It's all about you, John. It's you, buddy. <laughs> And I thank you very much for All right, viewing. we'll talk to you later. Okay, I'll see you, man. See you, Kelly. All right, I'm going to hang up on both of these people, both these crazy cats. Uh, now, now it should catch up as I'm I'm all by myself. All by myself. Don't want to be all by myself. You know what? I'm going to try to reconnect. I think in YouTube, if you stop, yeah, I'm going to try that. Okay, it's not letting me. Oh dear, now I'm having wirecast problems. All right. Okay, there we go. Now I click that. And we're back. Yay, we're back again. All right, now I'm going to call Linda. I don't know what that was about. Come on in, Linda. The water is fine. Hey, Linda. Hey. Hey, how you doing? I don't know what it I don't know what the dealio is, but the indicator at the top of the wirecast was uh, giving me fits and then Yeah, it's giving me messages. Well, the, the, my connection with you is also very shaky, so. That's fine. We're just yeah, I think move it on. might be related to your internet bandwidth itself fluctuating. Yeah, that's probably it. So I probably definitely shouldn't rasmatas. That would be just pushing it. Rasmatas. Not no. Take no, up all the bandwidth. Ton worse here. Oh, did it? Okay. Well, uh, yeah. as, as long as you can still hear me, let's just go ahead and try to wrap up the show. We've already given away the, the thingy thing. We've talked to the, the two people. Now it's time for the viewer video of the week. This is from Jack Bisson, who before gave a wonderful super chat. Thank you so much. And this is the first snow at, and I don't even know how to say it, Hubeline Tower. This is in Connecticut, and this is the viewer video of the week.
Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. Wow. If you would like to send in your viewer video of the week submission, just go ahead and send it to Ken Heron upload at gmail.com. I don't know if we're streaming anymore, but we're recording and you got a, you got a message right across your face. How do I get rid of that message? Oh no. I love it. Oh no. Oh, oh Linda. I'm sorry about that. If you could just move up a little, just, I, I see your nose in your eyes. You just, just th there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I hate Skype so much. I hate you, Skype. Do you hear me? One day I will have my vengeance, and you will come crashing down like the pile of crap you are. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, Christmas time. I'm out tomorrow. I'm driving 17 hours to Philadelphia. Uh, thank you, everyone, for watching up until the time where it just uh, fell apart. And uh, Linda, thank you for being on. I appreciate it. Thanks to the yeah. everyday dad, Gary. Thank you to Kelly from Ready Set Drone. Are we missing anything? Do we? Did we miss anything? I got all the candy. I gave away the. I go with, and, and what, what else we missed? Well, you never talked about that that relic, that World War II relic you <gasps> mentioned. Yes, 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 yes. Let me go ahead and play that. Yeah, this is. Uh, you know, you've heard about the cement ships from World War II. They were running yeah. out of mm -hmm. ma materials. And uh, yeah, let me get this queued up for you. They were running out of materials, of course, in, in, the, in the World War of the Twos. And so they had to start making boats out of anything they could. Heck, they even made a ship out of ice towards the end of the war. And so this is from Bump Kick House. He shared a video of uh, this, this barge. It's in a place called Port... Penton in uh, Bangor, North Wales, UK. It was used in the convoy days of the Second World War. And the tide is low, so you can actually see it now. So here you go. <clears throat> the ships are just sitting there on the, the gunk. This is usually buried underwater I'm sure it's a nice home for marine life you wouldn't think that a concrete boat would float would you no you wouldn't awesome Thank you very much, Bump Kick House, for sending that in. I very much appreciate it. And with that, let's go ahead and uh, end the show. Linda, thank you so much for yes. stepping in these many weeks. I think Dana will be back next week, but uh, it was great having you here, and, and we hope to see your face grace the stream once again very soon. Are we doing a bonus show tonight? Oh, do you want to? Yeah, let's do that. I well, got a couple I know, things I we can know. talk about. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. We've got to talk about your awesome photo. That's a little sneak. Make sure you watch the. We got it. Yeah, we got to do. We got to do a bonus show. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna say goodbye to everybody in the stream, which is apparently back now. Yay. Uh, <laughs> so right, right when we're about to finish, the bandwidth comes back. So, uh, in the bonus show. We're going to talk about this amazing photograph that Linda took by accident. And there's going to be a video that's going to post here in about 20 minutes, I think. I've scheduled it to post here in about 20 minutes. That will explain it all. So Merry Christmas to everyone. Cool. Before I go, I, I do have a couple more things I wanted to share. I was going through an old album. Now that we've got the bandwidth back and people are watching going through some old pictures and I found some some gems let me share those with you this is me and my mama <laughs> look at
at me. Aren't I cute? I probably got a load in my drawers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, uh, gross. <laughs> I got another one here. This is me and my sister, Julie. It's like the seventies or something. I think I had that look on my face cause I'm about to go to a funeral or something. I don't know. I'm about 12 there. This is my grandmother. <clears throat> Laura, I called her mom. Mom. We lost her just after Christmas last year. This will be actually the first Christmas without her. But I always have her with me because she's right here on my arm on a tattoo. And I've got my pop-up. There's me and my pop-up. My grandfather. He died when I was about 21. And it looks like, I believe, we're in the midst of a tickle. I believe I'm being tickled in that picture. So. <laughs> going up to see my mom and uh thanks everybody for watching today i hope you have safe travels if you have to hit the road be careful uh go check out linda's channel clever dark elf kelly from ready set drone and gary everyday dad all the links are in the description and uh until next time oh wait i don't have the i don't have the outro ready hang on gotta have the outro ready okay until next yeah. time, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and a buh. And bye. And bye. There you go. Yeah.